Every person experiences life's trials, and I was no exception. Before I headed to China to earn money, I believed I was a genuinely content individual. I thought that everyone faced difficulties, but we could all handle them. However, lying under those hospital drips in the intensive care unit, in a foreign country no less, after escaping near death, I couldn't help but question whether to thank my fate or curse it. In my younger years, Lara and I crossed paths. Her family had been living in Israel for quite some time, as her father held a prominent position as a chief doctor at a large clinic. However, in the early 2000s, he was offered better opportunities in Russia. Placing his wife and daughter by his side, Viktor Mikhailovich settled their family in a prestigious residential complex within the city. It's common knowledge that children from affluent families are often spoiled, and Lara was no exception. From my earliest recollections of her, she had always been that way. She joined our ninth grade class, instantly captivating my classmates with her vibrant personality, unique style, and array of expensive gadgets. I'm not entirely sure why, but out of all the attractive individuals in our class, she chose me, a quiet and unassuming student from an average family. Gradually, as I grew accustomed to her audacious behavior and ability to connect with anyone, I fell deeply in love with her. We successfully completed high school, and on graduation day, we were crowned the most beautiful couple. I felt flattered, of course, but for Lyra, it was just another moment in her natural element. Over time, I grew accustomed to being in her shadow, and no longer paid attention to her whims, simply doing as she pleased. Cooking had always been my passion, and it quickly became clear that it would be my chosen profession. Despite our parents' pleas, Lurka followed me to culinary school, and together we became hopeful chefs. For almost five years, I worked diligently in various restaurants around the city, while Lurka struggled with the idea of being subordinate and often opted to stay at home. We rented an apartment in the city center and started to build a life together. Whenever our friends teased us about getting married, I remained silent, while Lurka would jokingly remark, Darling, when will I finally have a wedding ring on my finger? I want a beautiful dress. But deep down, I had made a personal decision. I would not marry until I had made enough money to open my own cafe. I knew that my success would be influenced by her father, and I didn't want to have any dependency on him. But Lurka didn't understand or care about my motivations. She couldn't comprehend that I wanted to provide for her and make her happy. How could a woman be content with a man who couldn't achieve his own dreams and be his own person? Our relationship started to deteriorate as I constantly procrastinated and we began arguing more frequently. One day, Lurka came home intoxicated and uttered these words. I'm tired of waiting for you to propose. The girls and I made a bet that I would be the first to get married. If someone beats me to it, I'll leave you. I was furious in that moment perhaps even more so at myself. What could I offer her? She was accustomed to luxury, while I toiled away in a hot kitchen, barely making ends meet. I quickly grabbed my jacket and headed over to Ilya's place. We spent the entire afternoon together, knowing that true friends are there to support you during tough times. During our conversation, Ilya mentioned that Lara would eventually sober up and come to her senses, leading her to apologize for her actions. It's worth noting that Lara and Ilya were classmates and attended the same chef training courses. While Ilya may not have been the most skilled cook, he was still a reliable friend. And surprisingly, Lara got along better with him than with any of my other buddies. Everyone affectionately referred to him as the Swede. As we engaged in a lengthy conversation, we found solace in each other's company during this challenging period. Then in the autumn, the owner of the restaurant where I worked approached me with an enticing job offer at their new establishment in China. The conditions were favorable, and the salary presented an opportunity for me to save up for my own place within three years. Naturally, Lara decided to join me as well, as there were positions available for both of us. When the time came to depart for China, I proposed that Ilya join us too. However, unforeseen complications arose with his mother, who had been hospitalized, making it impossible for him to accompany us on this adventure. After a month of diligent work, Lara and I were filled with joy and anticipation as we prepared for our upcoming flight. 
With confidence, we checked our luggage at the airport, envisioning the successful changes that awaited us. As I gazed affectionately at my girlfriend, I couldn't help but marvel at the fact that we were about to embark on an adventure in Asia together. Her eyes reflected a sense of excitement and a longing for transformation. Once our work began, however, we quickly realized that it would take some time to adjust to the local atmosphere and hone our skills. Working in the restaurant demanded immense effort from me, to the point where I occasionally lost sight of my own identity. Yet, amidst the challenges, I found myself falling in love with the vibrant atmosphere. Lara and I had little time for socializing, only managing to steal a brief moment over morning coffee before getting caught up in our duties. Lara took on the responsibility of procuring meat for the restaurant and would often venture to the local market, where she had already established connections. I felt a sense of pride as I witnessed her skillfully negotiating discounted prices with Chinese sellers, bringing back fresh, marbled beef. This inspiring experience led us to affectionately nickname our kitchen Chiyo San. Lyra's flirtatious nature with the waitstaff only enhanced her already charismatic presence. However, at a certain point, I began to feel unwell. The unfamiliarity of the local cuisine started to take a toll on my stomach, resulting in frequent nausea and intense headaches. To persevere, I resorted to taking strong painkillers, allowing me to continue working despite the discomfort. The rainy season had commenced, and I was worried that the constant dampness would finally wear me down. However, I did my best to persevere without burdening Vera with my complaints. She was already working tirelessly, constantly traveling to markets and late-night grocery stores. Ilya's arrival brought us great joy, reuniting our trio once more. Lurka had been transferred to the restaurant's bustling kitchen, which slightly eased our employment situation. I worked alongside the chef until 9 p.m., while Lara continued until 10 p.m. Some evenings, I would head home early and wait for her there. Ilya would often join me, bringing some beer, and we would engage in conversations on various topics. He would share his recent love ventures, mentioning a passionate affair with a married woman. Despite urging her to leave her husband, she insisted that everything was fine. This would frustrate Ilya, leading him to drown his sorrows in alcohol and seek solace in my company. Meanwhile, I had refrained from drinking alcohol for quite some time due to stomach issues. On this particular day, I couldn't even make it to work due to severe stomach pains. After a few hours, I started feeling better and decided to prepare myself a meal. To my dismay, there was not a trace of meat in the refrigerator. I dialed Vera's number and asked her if she could bring a ready-made meal from the restaurant. While waiting, I boiled some eggs as a makeshift snack. When my girlfriend arrived home with the food, Ilya and I were already inebriated, eagerly awaiting her arrival and the spoils she brought. You might be wondering if I had any suspicions, but even on our final evening together, nothing raised any alarms for me. Perhaps it was because of my weakened body and illness that I let my guard down. So when the whole truth was revealed to me, I didn't immediately comprehend what was happening to my once happy and promising life. Could I have ever imagined such a turn of events, even in my wildest dreams? The surrealness continued as Lara arrived home with two bags, one yellow and one black. I noticed her setting the yellow bag aside and unpacking beer snacks for Elia from the black one. I chuckled, thinking that she was offended and decided not to feed me. Just the day before, Lara and I had argued about our wedding, while we were out shopping and stopped by a jewelry store. Lyra defiantly turned away from me, pulled out three cups from the pedestal, and unwrapped the yellow bag. It emitted the comforting aroma of boiled duck and onions. She filled bowls with broth and meat, and my mouth watered as I smiled contentedly. Then a platter of appetizers arrived on the table, snow-white fragrant rice and rice buns. In that moment, I thought that despite our argument, she still loved me. Lara even served me a separate bowl of food, explaining that there were no Chinese spices in it. Ilya remained silent, his gaze lowered as he chewed on rolls and washed them down with beer. It seemed like he was pretending to ignore Lyra, and she appeared to be doing the same. But I didn't pay much attention to them, as I was simply too hungry. I eagerly grabbed my chopsticks and reached for a glass of water, anticipating the meal ahead. 
The phone rang in the hallway, prompting Lara to rush into the room with it. It turned out to be my dad on the other end. In the kitchen, I found myself alone with Ilya, and an awkward silence settled between us. As I set aside the sticks I was holding, I took a sip of water, sensing that something was amiss. Is there something wrong? Something I should know? I asked my friend, breaking the silence. Ilya mumbled in a hoarse voice, peering at me guiltily from beneath his bangs. I don't even know what to say, he confessed. Frustrated, I stared at him, replacing the glass on the table. He ran his hands through his hair in frustration, then rubbed his flushed face before unexpectedly reaching towards me. However, his hand accidentally knocked over my glass, spilling water onto Lara's plate of vegetable stew and toffee. We both recoiled, but then couldn't help but laugh quietly like co-conspirators. Forgetting the conversation momentarily, I quickly transferred my rice and stew into Lara's dishes, preemptively trying to avoid her wrath when she returned. I had to swiftly clean up the spilled water and add soy sauce and seasonings to her bowl. Well, hopefully she won't notice the switch. She's been improving her cooking skills. I declared proudly to Ilya. He nodded in agreement, adding, Lurka has always had a knack for quickly picking things up. Even our Chinese friend, who's a master of noodle making can't resist her stuffed cabbage. Grinning, I leaned closer to Ilya, covering my mouth with my hand as I whispered, you know, I'm planning to propose to her next month. Will you help me with the preparations? Suddenly, Ilya's demeanor changed, and he became sullen. He stood up, pacing around the kitchen, lost in thought. Then, he abruptly headed to his room, shaking my hand before leaving in a hurry. I realized that my friend might be feeling jealous of me due to his personal problems. However, I reassured myself that he would eventually get over it. In the meantime, I helped myself to some rice from his bowl and left the dishes in the sink for Lyra, who I would later inform that Ilya had already eaten. Lyra seemed visibly nervous and responded briefly to my questions, mentioning her concerns for her father. Throughout the rest of our time together before the tragedy struck, we remained silent. Lara appeared lost in her thoughts, and there were moments where she seemed distant, especially as she handed me the sticks with a lump of rice. We finished our meal, and Lara diligently cleaned up the table and washed the dishes. I stepped outside to smoke, while Lara patiently waited by the table. Suddenly, she collapsed to the floor, her face contorted with pain. I rushed to her side, desperately seeking answers about what was happening. Lara's complexion turned pale, rendering her unable to speak. She lay in my arms, gradually losing consciousness, her surprised expression fading into darkness as life slipped away. The minutes until the ambulance arrived felt excruciatingly long, stretched into agonizing hours. My own stomach began to ache, realizing that the food we had eaten might not have been fresh. Finally, the paramedics forcefully broke down the door. In shock, I stayed on the kitchen floor with Verka unconscious in my arms. We were both taken in the same ambulance, with an oxygen mask placed over my face. I felt completely lost, unable to think clearly. When I eventually woke up in the hospital, a police officer stood outside my bed, likely informing the nurse about my condition. A woman dressed in a gray suit entered the room and approached me. She spoke broken English and offered her services as an interpreter. I nodded and immediately asked about Valeria's condition. The answer I received sent me into a state of shock and confusion. I felt as though I was being pulled into a void, overwhelmed by the commotion happening around me. All I wanted was some peace and quiet. Over the next couple of months, I experienced recurring lapses and moments almost akin to being in a coma. It felt like the aftermath of some sort of poisoning. I would be revived and pumped up multiple times. As I later learned, these episodes were a consequence of some sinister plot. Eventually, people from the police approached me, asking strange questions about my relationship with Valeria. They inquired if we had ever fought, if she had been unfaithful, or if someone held a grudge against me. I began to mentally review all of Valeria's friends and acquaintances, but couldn't fathom that she would be capable of such a thing. How could my closest friend keep silent about it all? Then he appeared at my doorstep. Ilya, my best friend, who came to confess before his inevitable arrest. 
Chinese laws were unforgiving, and remaining silent about an assassination attempt carried severe consequences. As I listened to Ilya's horrifying account, it felt as though my hair was turning gray in real time. How could Valeria have schemed such a thing? And how could my trusted friend have become complicit in her plan? While I toiled away, working tirelessly, they slept and carried out their secret endeavors. Valeria got what she desired, and if she didn't, she swiftly found a way to cover her tracks. Ilya, on the other hand, crossed lines by sleeping with my girlfriend and then pretending to be my confidant, all while hiding his own dark motives. Yes, I believe that I was the target of that unfortunate evening when the rice and vegetables were poisoned. It remains a mystery whether it was a miracle or if Ilya somehow realized what was in the plate and purposely knocked over the glass of water. Either way, in an instant, I lost my beloved, a friend, my health, and any hope for a future. My disability prevents me from pursuing a career. Even when Lara's body was taken away by her parents, they didn't bother to see me. Later on, I heard from a mutual acquaintance that her father cursed the day he and his family returned to Russia.